Okay. It's time, isn't it? Yeah. We're really going to start reading. Yeah. I won't go up to it. If we all say more. Come on. I'm forward. We'll call this session to, to order this uh, special study session. Uh, we'll start with uh, discussion items and the first discussion item that Shelbyville overlooked concepts presentation and I think Representative of Neil Schaefer are here and if you would just step over to the microphone and fill us in please. Hey there, my name is Sean Mayer with Neil Schaefer. I'm the project manager for this project for the Shelbyville Riverwalk and uh, River Overlook project. Uh, Shelbyville was fortunate enough to get the TAP grant, that's the Transportation Alternative Program grant that we wrote and submitted for you. Last year got approved for just over $1.1 million in construction. Uh, we've engaged Studio 8 as our subconsultant, the architects. Uh, I've got Matt Taylor and David Phillips with me. They're going to run through some concepts that they've been working on. Uh, to present to you some ideas for the River Overlook, uh, get feedback so we can present to the public and then to the City Council for a vote so we can move forward and get this thing going for you guys. Um, Matt Taylor and okay. Dave Phillips. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Dave Phillips. Uh, I'm Matt Taylor with Studio 8 Design. Uh, we're architects in, in Nashville. Uh, we worked with Neil Schaefer on the Bicentennial Park project for the city of Franklin, where we had a, an overlook and a lot of floodplain issues with the, the Harpeth River there. And so this was a great chance to get back together to um, look at this for Shelbyville. I think we've got a great opportunity here. Um, and I'm going to let uh, Davis walk you through the design concept options that we've got for you. And we'll project them on the wall here. Uh, we got three different options to share with you. So what we'd like to do, if it's okay, is, is run through the three and then we'll have them all pictured together. And then we're happy to take any questions or, or give any feedback from you all that you have on them. And we can go back to specific slides if you need to. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Can someone get the lights over there? Is it all right for us to dim the lights in here? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Is it good? Volume? Hopefully, anybody hears that. <laughs> well, my name is Davis again. And thanks for letting us be here. This is really exciting, uh, really fun project we've been working on, and uh, been very excited to show you guys these three concepts. Um, oh, I can see him. We're going to get to that. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, our Shelbyville Overlook. This is just our generic split basic rendering of the site that we use to uh, show all of our aerial photos through the designs that you guys will see. But let's get into it. So first, this is just a generic page of what we heard, feedback we received from you guys initially of our wants and what we don't want. And I'll save you from squinting and reading the fine print here, but essentially we're looking around 
50 ish occupants at a time and whether that's for just pedestrians coming through or organized meetings of any sort. So something that could be closed off to the public or open, maybe varying amounts of enclosure um, and exposure. Um, no HVAC is going to be in this. Be a little bit electrical for any lighting or if there's any sort of that going on there. Pretty simple. Um, the most important bullet point up there that we took into consideration is how it relates to the city center and the courthouse and how it all comes full circle to tell the story of Shelbyville. So a few of our initial case studies here, just projects we were researching, they kind of spread far and wide. You'll see one from Switzerland, but something in common with everything we're studying is that we want we want a design that really gestures towards something that it moves in such a way that it that it focuses your your view on something specific or a landscape or any point of interest and you'll see a few of these come up later when i introduce each design so before i get into design options we're starting in looking at the site as a whole and what we've been scheming is to take the public square and expand it to this urban grid and almost complete the the square at this optimal point where the overlook is going to be next to the dam and this exact spot you can see is a direct line of sight to the courthouse it is next to the dam to focus on that and a little bit away from the highway to block out any noise or distractions. And in a 3D view, uh, you can see how we've sort of triangulated on this, on this point that we think could really provide a special moment for anybody out there. And we believe that the two buildings in that line of sight you can get just enough clearance that when you're out there on the overlook experiencing everything, you can look back and see that, that crown jewel of the courthouse and always have it allude to the city and make you want to go in and explore. So our first concept when thinking about what brings Shelbyville's character into an overlook, it's like, well, Let's start with the seal itself. And we all were like, the Pencil City. Okay. Had no idea of it, but that is a very cool fact. And we ran with that too, literally. Like, what if it's made out of pencils? And so we had some initial conceptual art of if these structural members are sort of hexagonal in the shape of pencils and have this sort of play on the history of Shelbyville. And you see a few of those case studies from the first page that really take these linear elements and create movement and, and a certain gesture with them, which is what we try to do with our design. Uh, in plan view, it's a little hard to see, but essentially it, it's it's a curved experience. It's it's a boardwalk overlook that, that cascades out over the bluff over the river and creates a unique solution to turning that corner of this expanded urban grid. So one of our first uh, conceptual images shows how we have these quilt pencils sticking out of the ground and they throw your view out towards the dam and create this beautiful cascading arc that, that um, rises out the one point at the focal point of that optimal viewing area for the city center. As you can see here in this little sketch view, this is sort of if you're across the street at Fisherman's Park and looking, you can see how, how everything about that overlook is almost pointing at the courthouse and it's it's that little bit of mystery and detail that that some people notice and some don't, but it it creates that 
that magic moment for someone out there. And this is other view coming in from the highway. So it certainly grabs your eye when you're coming into town. And uh, we're thinking the ends of these pencils are going to be our eraser ends, where we uh, can have them illuminated red to make a really cool effect at night. And uh, initially, we had the pointy ends out, and it looked like something that might scare the children. And don't think that's what we want. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we had fun with this. And from an aerial view, you can see how the, the, the movement of the overlook plays with the movement of the river and coming in from the highway. And it creates this unique uh, pedestrian experience or a cyclist if you just want to meander off the greenway and travel out there and really get a different perspective of the river and the dam. And so, oh, sorry. I was just going to say that. <laughs> Slow down. There. <laughs> uh, we put the uh, proposed park location where we have heard some feedback and where we anticipate the entrance to the Greenway being. And we show that on these just to give a little bit of reference for how the park and the Overlook might interact and play together and arise questions. Okay, not good. So that is the Pencil City scheme. And now, also featured on your seal and probably what the city is most known for is the walking horse celebration and um a couple of case studies on this page are two rather famous pieces of architecture and what they have in common is they heavily focus on the roof plane and the crown plane using very thin sometimes almost vanishing using uh linear structure and Moving into plan view, which we took it quite literally yet again, what if the horse track is the pavilion overlook? So we pulled the geometry from um, just aerial views of the stadium and want to make a very special 360 degree experience that people can interact with, engage with off the greenway. And so you can get an idea here of, of the elegance of this design and how we want the roof plane and the ground to almost fit out into this just very fine line that interacts with the, the sky and the ground, all supported by these very light and playful uh, columns. And I think it'd be a really cool idea with this game to take some of that um, the signage from the uh, Celebration Stadium, the, the, the wrought iron arches, and have a really cool Welcome to Shelbyville sign that sort of sweeps through the design. There's a lot of possibilities with this one. And our magic moment on this idea is once you've gone out and seen the dam, experienced the overlook, the goal is to turn around and have the courthouse almost framed in a perfect little picture that also just reminds you that the Overlook isn't the prized possession of the city, but it's really a beautiful public square. And you'll notice I put horses on fences. And a fun idea is if each fence has a different form of movement that these horses very specifically and meticulously do. And we can have some fences be telling the story of, of how Shelbyville came to be the walking horse capital of the world and tell the story of how the horses do it themselves. And I think it'd be a or it could be left totally open and leave you exposed to the river below. And from our aerial view. Uh, I like that this shows how it interacts with the Greenway and it, it, it can play with the park to be a sort of grand entrance to the Greenway and you know with the future developments that happen down the river walk. And it, it really it really has a presence there coming off the highway 
that I think will turn some heads. And that's our walking horse concept. And for number three, we are sort of calling this our, our modernist movement design. You'll see some pretty far out case studies up there that don't be afraid of. But what's important about these images are, are like I mentioned at the beginning about the gestures and the movement that we're trying to achieve through these. And in the third concept, we wanted to really explore putting a different image on the river walk and see what could come out of a more progressive architectural style down the road. And the plan for this design, it, it plays with the different axes, same as the last two. It completes that urban grid. And there's a few different elements that you'll see in 3D view that explain its positioning and everything about it is geared towards the dam and meant to, um, like the first one, so throw your views out in that direction. So here you can see we introduced this wild curved roof with a little sketch in the top right that was playing with where the two ends of this roof sort of fold back in a way that it 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 draws your line of sight out towards the dam on one end and towards the courthouse on the other. And we have that element above and down below we want something to support it that feels grand and monumental for signage opportunities, but also be permeable to the river and done thoughtfully and not fully draw away from what's happening above. And our final imagined moment for uh, this third view is like I was talking about that roof folding back. The, the vision is for it to peel back in such a way that that furthest point when you're coming back from the edge of the um, overlook, it's gonna it's gonna put you right there on that special spot again. And again, it's these little moments in the infinity detail that's gonna go into this that are really gonna make it special. Um, you'll see here on this end, how there is a little sort of observation area that is fully cantilevered out over the supporting wall. And that is to, like I was saying before, focus on the side of the dam. We want you to have a different experience approaching this one from all your different angles. So from the dam, or sorry, from the highway, you have more of a linear, rigid colonnade. From the dam side, you have the curved roof where the columns bow out and create yet another experience for passive eyes, which you can get an idea of here if you're in there. Having the roof bend in such a way that the center of it is its lowest point, it, it creates this tension in there that when you move in either direction out from the center, it, it creates this expansive sort of breathtaking opening experience where it just folds out into the sky. And for my air will do you can see again. It it definitely takes a a forward turn in the in the form architecture. It, it it could in a sense lead the way for what is to come on the river walk and really make a statement for the city. And all three of them together, which I have on this final slide, they all have their own interactions with the city. They all have their own grasps from the highway, and from passerbys, and I think that all of them we can we can mix and match all three of them. We can play with some elements of one to bring to another, but our ultimate goal here is to design something elegant, but thoughtful and simple, and never take away from 
the crown jewel of the center of Shelbyville. And um, coming off the highway, we want to really make a statement that signifies that you are here. That's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You seem to see something there. <laughs> what else do you have? That, that, that's what we have to share tonight. We do these three preliminary options uh, for you all. And um, we, uh, sorry, I should stand in here. So, um, if, if you've got questions or feedback on any of these, we wanted to bring this as our introduction to our design thoughts and working with Neil Schaefer on the river walk and how um, he had such an interesting moment and place that you have outward views of what this overlook is going to be. So how does it work for people that might see it from the car, from being running on foot, from being on a bicycle on the river walk, or coming from the square down to the river and knowing where you are downtown and how to get back uh, from a wayfinding standpoint. So it's an inside out and outside in uh, opportunity and knowing that the river walk will continue to follow down the river, it's a trailhead and not just visually from the cars driving by, but from the pedestrians that may want to walk and explore the river and potentially go to new activities and that happen along the river over time in the future. So we're we're setting up a starting point. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Interesting design. Uh, council, you have any comments or city manager or anyone have any comments on the presentation? We just say. Well, we're very curious about what the council thinks about it. Uh, staff has reviewed. Uh, we've all kind of came up with some of our preferences, but we'd really like to hear your thoughts, and especially why Studio A Neil Shaker here. Uh, two and three have roof covers, right? Number one did not have a cover. That's correct. Right. Yeah. I personally think shade would be good this time of year. <laughs> Especially after this week. <laughs> I do think. Yeah, that you, you are incorporating some set down thoughts too, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, we can get those. And I do think there's opportunity with the first design, with the way that these columns stick out, that we can have a sort of temporary covering on them for closed events or you know string lights for the seasonal times or yeah I, I was definitely when it comes to your pencils and you were talking about the eraser and yeah. red um what bridge is it nashville that's changing colors that does that type of thing i think that's mm. kind of a little yeah. innovative i think that Absolutely. that would be really cool but mm -hmm. i like them all and I'd like to actually see a little bit of everything that you have designed in one. Uh, That's where it gets fun, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's really good. Uh, Thank you. Councilmember Feldhaus said it's very interesting. You, I thought you had me hooked when you went to close them. I didn't realize you had three because I didn't look at them. Back to the head of and I was like, wow, what a concept. And I had written down things like the lights changing color. You said red, but yeah. too easy to make it. Red, white, and blue one day. Another yeah. thing, the situation. Work with the seasons and yeah. the holidays. So any, oh, yeah. of those, any of those, I'd like to probably see something like that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And then when you got to number three, that, that's really thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. and I could see myself if I'm from out of town driving across that bridge. Or walking up and seeing that swooping roof. Right. That, that, whoa, what's that? What's that? I need to go see that. That's the kind of thing that I think, from a marketing standpoint, or right. you know, people wonder what Shelby Bill's about, even though we got that horse heritage and the pencil heritage. Right. That's one well, of the learn. And those teachers. stories can come into yeah. the overlook with the idea that this is the beginning of a Riverwalk Trail and there may be future overlooks, we can either tell the stories in the future there or along the trail or incorporate different chapters within each of the three of these. So we've got a lot of opportunity there to 
to bring those stories into into one option without dismissing the other two, whichever direction would go. Great. I'm glad we're going to do something with the river. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only one to dampen anything, but. We've obviously approved this, get started to make some moves and that type of thing. Um, Kay may can, Madam Treasurer may you can help me here as far as our investment so far on this. What time frame, timeline are we looking at? Is it a project that we uh, putting on the top shelf to finish soon, soon, those type of things? <laughs> I just well, didn't know we're we're in the early stages of design of coming up with these okay. high level ideas to bring to you all to get direction and feedback and then incorporate your feedback into one design yeah. that we go forward with. Um, there will be processes along the way to develop and refine the design to bring it back to you to do cost estimates. Um, so, so to speak to the yeah, the, the TAP grant that you received has a, you have to be in construction within three years. So the, the we presented a schedule to the city manager before. Um, we're ahead of the schedule on that as far as getting the design and such. We've been engaged by the city council or by the city to come with the design and go through full design construction plans for this project for the overlook as well as the river walk. Um, the fencing that goes along it, some lighting and such. And so we're currently in the concept design to make sure that everybody's happy with it. the last thing we want to do is put out a design and people go, what did you guys spend our money on? But you do have a, a TAP grant from the state that has to be spent in, in construction within three years. In this next year's budget, we just have uh, budgeted for uh, the design part, right? Or the Pre-design, what is it, Whitney? Preliminary engineering. That's what exactly what I mean to say. Preliminary right. engineering, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Great presentation. Mm -hmm. We look Thank forward you. to it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I also, if I can, I'd like to let everybody know that there will be a public meeting on July the 10th at 5 o'clock at the police department. They're going to present it for the public to come in and take in on the design. And we're going to hand out a flyer around the square just so because the square is going to be the most vocal about it because, you know, the merchants down there. So we're going to hand out flyers to invite them to the meet. But that's July the 10th at 5 o'clock. The council is a public meeting. The council doesn't have to be there, but we would like for y'all to be there to, you know, discuss with the public and and let you let them know what your preferences are. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, our next item, uh, we're trying to shift things around a little bit. Uh, consideration of our, our, we're talking about a ground lease agreement between Azure, Zephyr, Light uh, Support, and the Shelbyville Municipal Airport. Paul, do you want to enlighten us on what we're talking about there? We're discussing a lease that's been brought before the airport authority, and the airport authority has already reviewed and discussed the concepts and are in agreement with it, so we're bringing it before the council. Uh, what you have in front of you is a, is a layout of what Azure has requested to lease from the airport as the purpose of this lease is to, in turn, build for MTSU. Their uh, MTSU would be their sublease. And the idea for that is that they can move faster, get things moving a lot faster. So you're, what you're seeing there on that drawing is a ramp that can handle 30 aircraft and then also have, uh, on, you can see on the north side, a area for uh, it's, it's really just a portable building that are two that will be the staging for their students in the meantime while they're that will allow MTSU to start the process they'll be able to start having uh, sooner start having students here and while they design and build their main campus that they're going to be building this footprint is actually between the lease that you've already approved and the runway 
So what this lease actually does is do the construction work that allows the movement of the airplanes from the main campus that they that they request the lease for. And you can see on here the concept allows for an area for not only to park the 30 aircraft, but also an area for them to run up. And, and what that allows for is the, uh, the students to do some training and the instructors to do some training and the aircraft to get ready for departure before they even get on the taxiway and mix in with the other aircraft. So what you're seeing here is a footprint that's outlined in red is their initial request. There's some others that we're looking at too with the uh, some property behind Key Store that you've already uh, approved the purchase of. And then we're still working through the details on it, but that would allow for automobile parking for the students. That's a temporary situation until such time as the main campus is built. So again, that's something that would probably end up being just gravel. But that's a, that would be a separate lease and not do Azure. That would be something we would lease separately through MTSU as we see as they see need for. But the outline you see in red is right at six and a half acres, it's like 6.55 acres, or the way we do it on the airport, we rent by the square foot. So it's 275,650 square feet. You can see that it's actually written in there. It's just, my eyes don't, aren't that good. Um, but there is a, um, that's the square footage. That square footage can actually adjust a little bit. If you recall from the, the previous, the lease that we have with MTSU, some of those boundaries were going to change when they finally did the final design. There's going to be some necessary adjustments. Theirs is designed the same way. If you see on this uh, the side that's on the on the right side of the page there on the south side, uh, there's a lot of extra gray area. That area can be expanded or contracted as they need to based on what the final design is. So right now what they're looking for is um, 275, that was 275,000 square feet and at that our current rate right now is 35 cents a square foot that's our aeronautical land lease so that would be an annual lease of ninety six thousand four hundred and seventy seven dollars and fifty cents that's nine six four seven seven and fifty cents that's not on an annual basis annual lease um, that would be from azure the lease that they have set up has stipulations in there that's similar because of the fact that there's some leases to MTSU that they would need in turn to go back through the state similar to what they had to do with our direct lease that we have with MTSU. So that's what they're looking for right now is they've, they've started the process. Their lease has been uh, marked up, gone through multiple additions because of the fact that it goes before the state just like the previous one does. What kind of questions can I answer on that? Any questions? That, that 35 cents is something that uh, the, the, you, you probably see construction out there right now. The hangers that are going up right now, the ones that are in process, that's the same lease rate that they have currently. And director, did you say this had been before the airport authority and they recommend? Yes, that is correct. Now, assuming from a legal standpoint, the lease is going to be similar in language as far as what they did with MTSU, so it passes the sales. Yes, it's MTSU has to be. Actually, um, Azure came to us first in the process, and um, on behalf of the authority, they asked it to be put on hold, basically put it in the holding pattern and so, until the uh, the lease with MTSU had been edited and reworked and things of that nature, so they could share some of the same language. There'd be a lot of similar language. So we're to the point now where the council can approve this next Thursday or whenever. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. yes, it's going to be on your agenda next. Time. You also right. have members right. from Secure right. and MTSU, and also their legal counsel here. If you have uh, uh, any questions about any of that. Any other questions? Timeline, you got any kind of timeline? <laughs> Roughly. <laughs> That's a great question. I'll, I'll <laughs> <answer that. laughs>
So the, the timeline on this is uh, we, we hurry up, we get the, the, the release done, and then we wait and we wait and we wait for the state. So it'll go it'll <laughs> with State Building Commission and School Bond Authority for a couple of months before we can start construction, and then we'll start construction. And then it's up to the weather and Azure and their contractor to get it, uh, the pavement built as quickly as we can. Okay. We're hoping, I'm hoping to get planes here and, and have this uh, done by March. Next year. Okay. Next year. Right. And, Good. Thank you. Very right. from discussions with Azure, their contractor and their rating. So as soon as they'll have everything in the pipeline, as soon as this, the state can give them the nod, they'll be ready to move. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Any other questions, Council, about that topic? The next item is annexation request. And uh, Scott, would you fill us in on that, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. And I want to slowly ask for a And the city does own the property, but it's not officially in the city. So we would like to start the process while they do you could explain to go ahead. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, good evening everyone. So if you recall this piece of land, actually, there was an agreement between the city and the previous owner. And it, you know there's a house on the site, and I know the agreement that the baby who owns the house now will always pay uh, county uh, taxes. So what we agreed on as staff is that we as a city are going to subdivide out this part of land in the county as it is, so the house will be left alone in the county. And once this is done, which we are working on, we will come to you asking for annexing the remaining piece of land that is mostly leased by our uh, MTSC. So first of all, we just need to finalize the subdivision in the county, which we are working on. And after that, we will come to you, back to you, acting like we do with every applicant, to send us to the planning commission if you see that this is a good idea. And then the planning commission will send you a recommendation. So we don't have a specific timeline. It just depends on when the survey would be completed for the land and when the county completes the subdivision and we have to record it in the deeds office. Okay. Question? Since the city is the owner, do we formally have to apply for <laughs> annexation? Technically, that would I assume cause uh, require a vote down of the council to do that. Yes, we will do it as if it's an any applicant. So the mayor might have to actually sign the whole application. And the same will happen with the subdivision and will come to you as if it's an external applicant, the same procedure. It will be circulated to all departments, including Shelbyville Power, and we'll have the comments and we'll explain at that time when we know all the details what's going on. So we need to probably do that soon. Yeah. Yes. Once the subdivision is completed and recorded, the needs office will do it immediately. You don't have to read the request of the subdivision of it? So what happened is because uh, we want to get this piece of land where the house is outside. Yeah. So once this is done, we'll come with the application for annexation, which would include only the main piece of land that doesn't include the house. It just makes any sense. Yeah. It's just the whole idea we don't have, like if we do it now, the house would be in the city, which means that the city taxes would kick in. Well, I guess my point is, if Joe Builder out of here, the landowner, comes to request the same thing, they have to formally request something ahead of time before all these wheels get in motion. I don't want to be jumping the line and be out of order with uh, the city doing something different that we don't require any other property owner. Yes. Similar, I guess. We would do it the same way as if it's somebody applying. The city has the same standard, be it the city or any applicant. So we'll follow the same timeline, the same procedure, the same public notice. 
Well, the council doesn't have to ask for that property to be subdivided first, do they? We really should have done that. We shouldn't have done it. So should we put that on next month's agenda or next month and have that done? Okay. So there'll be a motion. I took it on the subdivision. Okay. You, to subdivide the property. You've taken it already to the Beaver County Planning Commission? Yes. Yeah. It should have been a vote here. Okay, this will be all right. Yes. So, should, so let's ratify that. Okay. Go back to ratify Yeah, we need to ratify that. That's our property. We need to, council needs to approve that. Um, you all, I mean, basically, you all just hit on vote. So, hey, we're ready to go. We want to annex that. But the same information would be taken to, because you got to take it to the planning commission. You got to do all the same documents and all that yeah. stuff. Yes. So, should I wait until there's an actual official? I, have, I, um, I want to see that again. I'm not. I don't recall that about the taxes. Was that in the contract? Uh, that's what the city manager brought to my attention. Was that in the contract, Scott? What to exclude? To exclude her, her, her house. I don't recall that being in the contract at all. I thought the council came city property who would pay any taxes. No, no. Well, um. Because they had a life estate, would they be responsible for C? No, it's city property, yes. So I'm not, that's why. Can we take a look at this before we go any further? Absolutely, that's fair. Yeah. If we can put Chris to hold up on it. His application already, uh, it was not on their planning commission, because their planning commission meant this. No, it's not. It was it's not on their agenda. for the following one, assuming that we are going to get what the. We can tell Chris to hold up on that. That's not a problem. Sure. And we move forward to the council to request a process. Oh, let's put it on the 13th. Yes, absolutely. That's okay. good. So I'm going to keep you in the loop agenda about what I'm doing. Okay. I need to get in. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, Wally. Yeah. Okay, the next item is um, Habitat for Humanity funding request. Scott? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Habitat did a presentation earlier in the year, and they have once again asked that the city council please consider ten thousand dollars one time contribution to help them launch uh, housing projects they're doing here in the city. Any discussion in council about that? I noticed that they um, decided to shut their doors for their thrift store uh, on the square and um, just carrying their public comments. So it's very unfortunate with so many people relying on the store and such. But uh, I think the biggest thing is that um, we've denied their funding and I think the county has denied the funding so they decided to just pretty much kind of pack up and, and certainly, uh, I guess, to earn all of their energy in the building. So that's the reason they come back and, and want to try this again. Hopefully that, you know, this body will will make a turn. And I know that, you know, that the nonprofits have kind of rolled off and we've had many discussions on what to do and such. And, and I believe that there should be a cap and I know that it opens a can of worms or opens a door to allow everyone to come in. That's just like the tourism side for others um, uh, wanting grants and that type of thing. So there is a line to be drawn, but uh, I think that we can certainly look at this type of thing on a case-to-case -case basis and certainly make it aware to those individuals that um, it's not going to be an annual thing. It's not, you know, so I think it's just the way that we can look at this. I appreciate them supplying us with their financial statements. That's a, done very well, actually. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me, and I had a conversation recently with somebody else that gives them a lot of money, and they were shocked that they had a payment nearly $120,000. Mm -hmm. I have questions as to where they, how, 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 who does that go to? Does it go to individuals that they hire to help on these houses? 
or is it staff type overhead type things? That would be my biggest question too, because you know, I think if, if this person's mind be actually given the money and no idea that they had that kind of overhead expense, and his interpretation was that it was going to overhead salaries overseeing the program, not actually going into the houses that a lot of the, the images built on building houses. Are, they've got like an ongoing expense like that in the last year or so. They had, the last year they hadn't built a house. Uh, so where would our $10,000 go? Yes, and so those kind of questions. Conversation I got into. I guess there's a representative here with them. Well, there are staff members, I do believe. Of course, the director and their employees in the, the thrift store, and there's a couple of main builders. Um, there's a lot of volunteering, I know. But as far as, um, you know, specifically where those dollars go. In the past, if I may, you know, in the past, when you had folks come all the time, they really, they included that in their budget every year. That's kind of what your appropriation resolution was. You were trying to get away from that. And I think what I heard you say is more almost project oriented. You, will, you would rather see people come to you with a particular project to you and say, this shows you what we need because of this. Instead of, I mean, it's right, there were people that their budgets were being run by us, but it's how they funded their budget. A lot of places, not all of it, but some of it. Am I understanding you correctly that you're thinking more about let people come to us, but when it's more on a project basis, it's not to fund their ongoing, you know, personnel. I think so many people will agree that, you know, we fell in a hole for COVID when COVID came around, and that detour, that halter, that that changed a lot of things. And their biggest fundraiser, I think, is the ball in, in Belleville, yeah. one of the biggest yeah. fundraisers. So that, that had to be cut. It's probably completely cut out on uh, 2020, but 2021, I think that it was cut in half. It was half the amount of people uh, in ticket sales and such, uh, auction sales. And so they've taken a really big hit. So I think that was the driving force for this person, this entity, this nonprofit to appear before the governmental bodies on this year because of that hit for those last few years. Like a short term thing, not a long term commitment. You know, not $10,000 a year for the next five years or something. Right. right. Yeah. So they've been hit just like so many others. But, you know, they decided to uh, take a step forward to the governments and Give it a shot. And yes, a one time thing. I wish that the representative was here. Is there anything else that the council is needing or while they're debating and thinking for the next several days? Maybe city manager Collins can reach out to the director. Or you're needing answers, councilman? I um, just had an overall statement that just like we had earlier, the resolution something nonprofits. Any kind of nonprofit. This point is how we would raise money from the community. Uh, philosophy, the reason we were cutting back on donations is that the philosophy is uh, why should we be taking our taxpayers' dollars and funding nonprofits and let the community decide on its own how to fund the nonprofits? It's real easy, as we saw just in one a vote earlier for the uh, chili cook-off. It's much easier to come and you hit up the elected officials and you get under pressure like need to be giving the money and that kind of thing because a group comes and asks for the money. It's much different if it's regulated by a policy and separate board or something like that. Like it's been in that past. Uh, so I so just caution you, you can just you can get inundated with nonprofits every month if you don't have some sort of policy, overall policy now to have them. I agree with that. That's the reason we were cut back on them because you didn't, it was subsidized, taxpayer dollar subsidized it too much, maybe, when it gets. Well, it, and you also have to keep that, do you have it in a, in the budget somewhere where you can you put it, pull it from the budget? But um, 
But I said specifically for planning, so I, it says, I think it's a current project. Do you know where it is? Yes. Do you know where the current is? But they're currently working? Yeah. And it's on Greenwood. Yeah, Green. Four oh three Greenwood. Got off of deer. Yeah. But that's not a lot of money. And you know, we've thrown out bigger dollars, bigger dollar bills on other issues and actions that that, that we have taken, previous councils have taken. And again, we're not asking uh, the taxpayers, uh, may we spend your money here? Or, you know, we're not going to our constituents as we probably should and and make those statements. So it is what it is. One comments I have is I, I was with uh, working with Larry Price and, and our church and folks when we first started Habitat for Humanity. Great, great idea. And most of the work was done, property was donated. Uh, I know churches and other organizations would uh, donate uh, the framing. Uh, we put the roofs on, we, we paid for the decking, we put the roofs on ourselves, we, we provided the labor and all those kind of things. I don't know what's happened uh, other than, of course, the cost of materials and things like that right there. They've changed uh, over the years, but uh, I don't know as far as uh, what Councilman uh, Bellhouse has said, I, I don't know about how much they pay the individuals that, that work there and are they paying for people that do. We just, we used to volunteer and then we would pay for the materials and all those kind of things. Our church would or organizations would and that's how we built the house. <laughs> things have certainly changed. They, there is no, they have begged for the last couple of years for um, developers and just individuals to, to they, they don't even use the word give anymore, give me land anymore. It's like, here's what we spotted, you know, how much, how much, you know, pretty much. There is no giving. So that's a change from the past. But they're having to 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 invest dollars for all of this stuff. There's not a lot of volunteering. So I'm sure pretty much part of that payroll when they spent there, the hundred and twenty thousand, you know, that it's just changed. I think it worked out. We actually did. Did they do? Did they do an account? You know, he has a big thing they want to donate. Maybe that's what we should look for. The habitat ball, of course, was there too. That's a fun right. They got a whole lot of money into the habitat ball. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know its current. I'm sure it did come to a stop. Okay. COVID, but I don't know where it stands now. I think they've had something. I mean, if the city seriously, if the city has a piece of property that they'd love to donate to Habitat, that would be great. They'll thank you. If it's, you know, seriously. Yeah. I think at one point we actually gave money to help. We may have some. Well, what, we go? Hey, it's been a long time ago. Also, there's a mission on the uh, project site and the uh, public works have been assisted. Yes. Uh, both in man hours and equipment hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got a buddy that I played golf with. It's a previous politician in the city of Tullahoma. That's what. That's how the nonprofits fund their self over there. They have some kind of, or maybe numerous, big time fundraisers, and they split. It. They end up with this amount of dollars, and they split it among the nonprofits. And he said that the city didn't give a dime. Well, I know First Community Bank had just had a, um, a 35th anniversary where they gave money to each nonprofit. Mm -hmm. uh, whether they gave to Habitat, did they give to Habitat? Yes. Uh, there were about 18 or 20, I think, yeah, that yeah. they donated money to. It's a good, it's a good cause, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. But, Because we did have to do a, a resolution, we'll have to come on as a resolution. Yeah. We have to make certain at least to advertise it accordingly. It's a different matter than oh, just regular items on the agenda. So, 
We voted this when it was last month or month before last. Is that right, Lisa? I believe it was four last yeah. month before last last, and um, it was voted it it was voted down. So um, I have to. I'm required by state law to this nonprofit to advertise it and to do it by resolution. We can't just do a business motion when you say we're going to give it to them. So I kind of need direction if you're going that way. So that I can put it in the newspaper that we're going to have a public, uh, we're going to have a public hearing on that, right? Uh, I think we have to have a public hearing. On it. Um, so I think we'll have to have an advertisement for the public hearing, and that's a 16 day. I'm not actually. I don't know that I can get it on the July agenda now that you're talking about it because it does require a public hearing, and that's a 15 day advertisement period. And you have to have it in the you have to have the resolution in the paper at least seven days before the meeting. You have to know the amount of money. <laughs> you have to know the amount of money. So I you know, I had suggested that since it had been brought back up by a council member that it be put on your study session agenda so that staff knows where to go, what to do. Do you basically want it on your agenda? Do you want us to move forward? Create anything to do. Can we defer or table it? Well, it's, I mean, later. Based, based on all that that I just said, and Ginger said, I don't believe we can even get it on your July 13th agenda. I don't think there's not enough days. So I think what we could do is y'all can think about it, and then I can put it back on for the August study session. And then you can decide at that point. Well, well that's not even going to work. I need to know tonight if you want to consider it or not so that I can put it on the August agenda. Because it needs to come on the study session agenda as, as a resolution. And I need to advertise it 15 days. So I need to advertise it sometime between now and before the study session in August. May I suggest just an idea? You could have this as a business item on July 13th where they vote yes or no, give us a resolution and go through the proper procedures, and that will be on August. The great idea, if you, you know, that kind of clears it up. The reason I, I will say your city manager reached out to me, this was something that a council member feels very strongly about. Y'all have already voted on it, he voted no. It kept coming back up, and I told him he needed to kick it to you for you all to give them direction on what you want to do. Okay, so unless anybody else wants to discuss any further, it'll be a business item for the July 15th agenda to authorize the staff to do the advertisement and the resolution for this request. Thank you, Jimmy. You're welcome. Thank you. My only, well, my only thoughts are is that if we voted it down before, uh, how do we bring it up again? Do we just keep voting on it, or how do we do items like that? Things just keep coming up, and we vote them down. And do we just review them again, or repeat them again, or how do we do that? Is there not a mayor? If you do not have a particular policy, I was asked about this question. I understand that there is a council member that is still bringing this matter up, okay. and your city manager wanted to know what he should do. Okay. And I said, put it back on your study session agenda. They can all talk and give you direction about what to do. He shouldn't have to continually put things on your city council meeting and plan for that, particularly when something has been recently voted down, that is for you all to tell your staff how you want to go. But it's when it, that sometimes things keep coming up. Yeah. And this is not the only time that's ever happened before. So yeah. this council needs to either move forward or put it to bed. And you can do that by a vote next week. Okay. Oh, uh, that we want is that what we want to do? We just want to move, put it on the next week and, and visit it. That, 
Mayor, I, oh, yes or no. Mayor, I think it does need to be a business item and you all are going to vote. Yeah. Whether we put, create the resolution and put it on and do all the advertising that we need to. Okay. No. I think we need to have a vote on this issue. Okay. Well, we can't vote tonight, but that's, yeah. Does that give you direction, Scott and Lisa, on what we need to do? Thank you. It's a good cause, no doubt about it. I believe in it with all my heart. Okay, the next item is uh, Spring Street Buildings Contract. And I'll ask uh, our uh, counselor, Ginger, if you would uh, tell us about that. I certainly will. Thank you, Mayor. Um, council members and everybody up here, and Kay, you probably should have been able to get the handout that I brought to you tonight. I'm sorry that we weren't able to put it in your Dropbox, but we'll get that up for you. The, um, there is a the second draft of the contract for sale and redevelopment of the real property, which is 100 and 104 South Spring Street, the Riverview project. Scott has had some discussions with um, Bedco Investments about a couple of things. They're calling it the Riverview Project. Um, so we have a draft of the contract for you all tonight. I'll go through that just a little bit. You can ask me any questions you have. This will actually be next week under resolutions. You will see I also on top of that have a fairly lengthy resolution. I think this is specifically necessary. Um, there are some things that we really should do by resolution when we do things by contract. Um, you will notice that the resolution itself is a lot of historical information. The resolution will not serve as a part of the contract itself, but it creates a record for posterity about why you did what you did. There's a lot of times down the road, I wish I had more information in minutes. Oftentimes we don't because we don't necessarily wrap up or make a historical timeline. So that is, in essence, the primary point of the resolution. So what you'll be voting on is to pass this resolution next week. The contract is a part of the resolution. It's going to be attached to the resolution. And you'll see it, I think item two, it talks about um, you approve that Mayor Carroll, he is directed to execute the contract and also gives him power to sign any and all other documents required to transfer title to the property. So we don't have to come back for y'all to get the deed and all that. That will set us up. So I just want you to understand the, the procedure why I'm doing it that way. So I, I think our resolution is probably good to go. Probably not a lot will change on that. Uh, unless y'all y'all look over it and you want me to add something to it, I will. You know, I'm a lawyer. I can I can just keep her up if, um, if you allow me to. Um, the contract for sale and redevelopment I did a few whereas is at the beginning just to make certain we all knew where we were, and this is by a request for sealed proposals. Um, most of the items in this contract deal with really that 30 day time period between you agree to sell it and how you're going to sell it. A lot of little different things you don't think about who's doing closing costs, who's going to be doing the closing, your property taxes, if they're earnest money, what the effective date is, the condition. So all of those little things you normally have in a purchase contract or sale of land contract, a lot of that stuff is in here. And I'll go down one by one and let you ask any kind of questions. But this contract also serves as a redevelopment contract. And I had sent you all out, I think it was actually the, the day, the Friday after your last council meeting some concerns that I had about how we quote enforce development and so this contract right here has very little enforcement in it now Kay and Scott and I were able to sit down earlier this week and go over some points and I can add more we will have to have those conversations with Bedco and I see Tonight. Thank you for being here. Um, we'll have to have a little bit more conversation with them. If we get to more that we feel like we need to expand out, we'll just keep you up to date on that by email before you get to here on the 13th. Um, but let me go through uh, one by one just to make certain uh, point by point the things that I think you might need to know. You'll see section one, I clearly have defined what the property is. Section two, of course, is what our purchase price is. 
they do not, they're not going to be financing this. Um, I think they already have the letter of credit, so it'll be cash to us at closing. No earnest money. The effective date of the contract, we're hoping that we have it all ready for you on the 13th and have a clean copy here so the mayor can sign it and Mike Davis can sign it and it'll be effective. That's what we're hoping. But now, if we get here on the 13th and you all feel like that you need to make an amendment or we have something to change, that's okay. We'll just make the actual um, the typing changes that we need that on Friday, the 14th, and then we'll get it signed. Um, the section five is more where I want to talk about the historic restoration and commercial development, redevelopment of property. I tried to use as much language that was in the proposal. And let me add to the proposal that Lori received as a sealed, sealed proposal is 36 pages long and will be also attached to the contract. And I'm incorporating it into the contract because that may become necessary for you all sometime down the road. Um, I didn't bring it all with you tonight, but that will, or a copy to it tonight, but understand that'll be a part of your packet for the meeting. In terms of the historic um, restoration, the things that I wanted to be very clear that I knew were based that we needed to make certain, this is what you gotta do, this is what you gotta do. You will see there that I've laid out a, a capital investment or more, that's what that is, that 2.7 million. Um, I added a completion of the historic restoration and renovation of the property within 18 months. That is what the proposal says they can do. That they could have the building, I think white, white box ready, I think is what they call it. White box meaning that it's ready to go for then a tenant to come in and make any changes the tenant needs to do. So number C, I put in there that the Riverview building, and I wanted to be very clear that this is a requirement. It seems to, the proposal says this is what they're going to do, but I want to make certain that this is a requirement, contract requirement. The Riverview building needs to be for exclusive commercial use by Grindstone Cowboy. The proposal says it's a mixed use, Mixed use usually means residential and commercial. This is a commercial. You all understood want commercial. Um, so I have put in C exactly what they were going to do as they talked about it. So I put that in there. Let me move to D. This is none of D was talked about in the proposal. This is that grindstone cowboy shall be open and fully operational on a full time basis. I put six or seven days. That was not, I don't think, anywhere in the proposal about what that meant. Within 24 months of the effective date of this contract. That to me is the basics. Now, let me say this. I don't know what their plans are. I don't know if they were going to do more soft opening and only being open three days a week. I, I don't know. That is sort of a talking point for you. And it's also to draw to your attention that there's not a lot of detail here. I want you all to be aware in the proposal that things could go awry a year or two years from now in a situation that you thought in your mind was clear where someone else said, I don't think that's a big deal because it's never been specified. In other words, the request for proposals and the proposals themselves, nobody said, hey, we're going to come in here, we'll have this business running, we commit to running that business for one, two, three years, nothing like that was said. So technically, the way I've got this written, if they come in and open it up six or seven days a week, I mean, that could fold within a month. Well, That's not a trigger on the contract. I, I want you to think, be thinking about those things, so, about the way that runs. Now, I know I sent a very long email to you all the next day, and I'm sorry. It had a lot of stuff in it. I was talking about maybe doing a lead of trust. Just the individual feedback I've gotten from some of you all, I don't think you want to do a deed of trust. I still could do a deed of trust that secures the contract that I could do a foreclosure, but I get I, I got the sense that you all don't want that. So we talked about two other things in terms of securing the redevelopment itself. Um, I know Mike offered 
a letter of credit. They've got a letter of credit for their development already. I mean, that's kind of what they're going to be using to do that. I don't think, Scott, we've had a full discussion about what they may be giving the city a letter of credit. And this is what Kay and Scott and I had quite a bit of discussion on, on how we put a monetary value on particular damages. We could put liquidated damages in this contract um, that if something is not done by a certain period of time or a, bill, a, a business is not run by a certain period of time, it automatically, the city becomes, it's considered a default on the contract and the city would be entitled to blank amount, we put fill in the amount, of liquidated damages. Now, we could demand those damages. Liquidated damages is one of those things that makes it a lot easier on an attorney when you go in and you sue on a contract and you say, hey, they did, this was a default, they didn't meet this standard, we're automatically entitled to this amount of money. So when Kay and Scott and I were talking, there were a couple of different parameters we thought that we might put in a contract like this. You all will be selling this property, uh, what, what in general business terms would be a loss for what you bought, bought it as. So that is a capture maybe that we could put in around $200,000. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's around $200,000. That could be a part of a liquidated damages clause. We also thought if they say they are not able to get operational for a year past the date, you want them to. We also thought about going back and capturing as a liquidated damage clause what you thought you would have been getting in sales tax revenue because they did include some of those numbers in their um, proposal. So I'm, I'm throwing that out there for you all to come back when I finish talking that you can tell me what what you think about that, but let me move on. Property taxes, that's not an issue. Closing date, I set by August 21st. If we can get it signed by the 13th or the 14th, that fills us another seven days past um, 30 days on closing. That's usually the way we do. Closing costs to be paid by the developer. Um, of course, the deed, we would give them the deed. And risk of loss passes on the deed. So just as I told Kay and and Scott, the city still has risk of casualty right now. If you have a tornado that comes rolling in here before now on August 21st, before you sell it, it's written to the contract. I mean, that's just normal business. They may say, hey, we're out. So we have risk of loss until that. So make sure you all remember that. I've got number nine, evidence of clear title. I need to get with Beth and Mike to see how they want. I don't know if they want a, a policy, an insurance policy, or just a title letter. But we'll figure that out from them what they want. Um, on a default right now, I just have the seller, meaning the city, can sue for damages or, or specific performance of this contract or both. This is where we might put liquidated, liquidated damages in here. On, on specific performance, you know, if something happens that they, they literally, it can't physically be done, you don't sue for specific performance. There's some things that just happen that you can't get it done. So, but but it's it's drafted that way so that you could um, you could pursue either one, and then um, I made certain to talk to Scott about this. Everything that's in the there's still a lot of personal property in the building. We don't want any of it. We don't want any of it. So anything that's in there right now is theirs. Um, I made certain in the next several paragraphs the condition of the premises, property inspection termite inspection, repairs, all of that is just to reiterate. They have already inspected the property. They know what damages are in this property, uh, what condition it's in, and that and they can go ahead if they want to do another inspection for whatever reason. But it, the, this contract is not contingent on that. Sure. Not at all. It as is, and, and um, the city has no responsibility, duty, or liability on any of those things at this point. Number 16 are seller representations. The only thing that we are stating are the main buildings are connected to public sewer. The premises are not in a federally designated flood hazard area. And we do declare here that there may be violations of applicable building and zoning codes. Well, we know there are. <laughs> the building's in bad shape. We probably have got some building code issues. So we do say that, but they also read in, they're aware of that, and they're taking the building as is. 
risk of loss, time of asset, almost everything else is just common everyday things you put in a contract like this. Just so that you'll know. So I know that was a very quick overview. I'll answer any questions that you have, but I want to bring primarily your attention back to item five. If, are there very specific provisions that you want us to negotiate on the redevelopment portion? I've given you a few things to think about, and I hope that sort of gets the wheels turning. Is there something that, as you have been listening to this, because you've been listening to this a lot now for, what, three or four months, is there something that you understood about when you were listening to those presentations? And I, and I will call, just remind you, their presentations, what they put up on PowerPoint and all those things, thing that they said to you, that's not a part of the proposal. The proposal is what the proposal is, right. that 36 pages. And we are allowed to amend and flesh that out in this written contract. <coughs> so now is the chance. So if you were thinking, hey, I really thought, you know, at least it'd be operating for a number of years or they would have their building. We also talked about, you know, we expect that their building permit needs to be at least issued fairly quickly in order to make this. We can put that in if they've got to get it done by a certain time. So, and we'll all meet again, believe me, me, Scott, Kay, Lisa, we'll meet again to make certain that we are reflecting what we need to reflect in here. But tonight, I was hoping to get some, report, some word back from you about what you want. Oh, and, and Henry, I went and looked, I think what we talked about was a construction bond. and think you mentioned about subdivision um, development. The city takes construction bonds all the time in order for us to be able to do a roadway. Problem, and, and this is what we'd have to work out, is how the money that we might particularly get off of a bond or a letter of credit is how then do we have the right to go on the property to do any of those things. So that is something we definitely would have to, if the council wants us to include something like that as security, um, we'd have to negotiate real clear um, triggers for what would then call the bond or call whatever. My motivation for voting for it was that they were talking about spending $2.7 million. Mm -hmm. If somebody's gonna spend $2.7 million on in the building, they're going to make something happen. It's right. going to, the city's going to wind up making money somewhere right. along the way. Whether it's, we all expect and want to see the grindstone cowboy, but anything can happen in 24 months. I agree. Uh, they may I agree. come up with a better resource they want to do in there or something, you know. Right. They may come up with a different concept and make some more money and make right. the city more money or whatever. That, I hate to say a specific name stuck in there saying you're going to be operational for 24 months or time to tie uh they say they're going to be renovated in 18 months you might tell you what happens if it goes 20 months do we i don't think we really have recourse anyway think we just wouldn't do anything we just you know if we're yeah. making progress on it i just wanted to have this flesh out this discussion because at other meetings we've had that oh they'll get it done in 18 months i think that was a part of your consideration Brand was a consideration. It was a specific point in your proposal request. So I can't ignore that. And everybody kept saying they felt like that was a part of the reason why that was selected. And so I put that there. But if council directs us that you want to take it out, and the main thing you're looking for is y'all make certain you renovate those buildings and put 2.7 million in them. I'll that's, do whatever that's you tell why me to do. Back with them bond or something that if they if all of a sudden they're sitting on 15 months from now and not doing anything we have a bond that says we can go take spend 2.7 million dollars but we can't until i get the property back so that's <laughs> what bringing up is i have to have a mechanism to get the property back i don't think they're going to do that but that will really be covers a lot of hills right we don't, be in it, i don't think they will either um but you bring up a good point, and that's why I'm saying you, there's sometimes that specific performance you just can't. Right. And let me—I forgot to mention this. You will notice that the contract. Everybody can hear me. The, the contract is actually with Bedco Investments LLC. 
you all received the, the proposal was submitted and signed by four individuals. Two is representing Bed, Bedco Investments, oh. and the other one representing Grindstone Cowboy. So my first actual draft of this was both of those. Oh. Then we got word back um, that Bedford Invest, Bedco Investments LLC is a limited liability company. They filed for um, incorporation with the state the day after your meeting um, earlier this month. So they are now all up for the state. Um, they have got own separate agreements with Glenstone Cowboy. I don't know who all their members are, not privy to all that. But so the contract is only with Bedco Investments, who is now, as of Friday, I think June 9th, a limited liability company in, in Tennessee. So just want to make certain you all are aware of that. Anything you can think of, Council, as we move forward, please let our city manager, Ms. Collins, know and also let uh, our, our attorney know what, uh, what needs to be added or what you think needs to be added to this contract. Okay. I know that's a lot of information. Feel free to look at it. Feel free to just call me this weekend, next week. I'll be happy. I'll be, I'll be yeah. meet with you for just talking to them either way. If you think you can do that, you can bounce ideas off me. What you want. But by the end of next week, we really, I want to have my administration team in place and we're doing it and that we've had time to talk to Beth and that's good because I really would prefer to have it all ready for you in your packet the way we all know that we think people want it to be. So. Anything else, Henry? You look like you got something else on your mind. Okay, no. Uh, I'd just like to reinforce what our city attorney said. Please look over if you have any issues or stones or questions whatsoever. Please tell us ASAP because I do know that Bedco Investments and Grindstone Cowboy. They've been in meetings with Dowell, Dowell uh, Engineering and also uh, an architect, and we're, we're ready to hit the ground running. They need to ask about the process for a very nice situation. So, when we have an opportunity for an investment like this for the city, I hope we can go through the details and make it for I just want to make certain that you all have no expectations that something goes horribly wrong down the road and you're like, why don't we have that and why can't we get it back, whatever. This is this is the time for me to be very, very specific on something that you want to trigger if you want liquidated damages. Okay? Any other comments? Let's move to the next item then. Uh, public comments timeline. Uh, Lisa, would you add that for us, please? Yes, sir. Um, as the council will recall, there's been a change in the law, and we now have public comment at every city meeting. So that uh, prompted me to change our public comment guidelines. It had not been updated in quite a while. So based on the regulations in the new law, I changed a few things, and I sent it out in your package. We'll adopt it by resolution in July. I'll go ahead and I'll read to you what I've got. And if you have any uh, questions or you know, want to make any changes, you just let me know. The purpose of a city meeting is to conduct city business. It is not a public forum. However, the mayor, city council, and administration are interested in your views regarding matters that affect the city or its residents. Therefore, we will set a set aside a 15-minute period in each minute, each meeting, to allow for the comment on any item listed on that meeting's agenda. Public comments at a study session can pertain to any city issue and do not have to be restricted to the agenda item. The following guidelines for public comments have been adopted by the mayor and city council and should be followed at all city meetings. The comment section will immediately follow roll call and will be held to, 15, to a total of 15 minutes. 
the mayor or chairperson may extend the time if he or she deems it necessary. Speakers should sign up on the provided sheet prior to the start of the meeting. Come to the podium when your name is called. Names will be called in the order they are listed on the sign-in sheet as long as time allows. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes. Equal time will be allowed for opposing viewpoints. No speaker may speak more than once a meeting. Comments may address any item on the agenda or if at a study session, comments may address any item pertaining to the city. Speakers should not make personal attacks and are requested to be courteous and respectful. Personnel issues shall be directed to city administration by the city manager's office and shall not be included in citizen comments. A calendar with time and location of all city minutes is posted on the city of Shelbyville website. Public comments are not structured to be a discussion period. The council will not answer questions. Council and city staff will follow up individually to provide more information as requested. Please note that public hearings are separate from public comment. Public hearings are held for the purpose of receiving citizen comments on a specific topic or issue. Thank you for your participation and interest in our community. And what, what I'll do is if the council adopts it, However, they won't if they have suggestions. We'll talk about that in just a second. But what I'll do is I'm going to set a podium up at the door at our meeting, and it'll have this new sign-in sheet that's just a little bit different than our others. It gives uh, has them put their name, address, and contact information. So if they have something that they want us to get back in touch with them about. And when the meeting starts, I'm going to ask the officers to bring me that comment sheet. And then we'll call their names from that meeting, from that list. So that way they have to sign, they have to be here before the meeting starts so they can sign up. And all that will be listed in the newspaper because that's all part of the new requirements is that how we are going to deal with citizen comments has to be listed in the newspaper. Um, does anybody have any suggestions to the rules or are y'all good with them? What? Okay. My understanding was that they could only speak to items that are on the agenda. Our study sessions are kind of loose about adding things to the agenda or whatever. Do we really have to allow any comments at a study session on any topic? You can, you can change it. We had talked about just leaving citizens' comments, as citizens' comments, that folks could just come and talk about whatever, why citizens' comments that can bring anything to your attention at the study session. You don't have to, you do not have to, but you can. The statute, I want to say, actually talks about issues that are maybe even pertinent to. I'm sorry, I don't have it right in front of me. I think it says germane to the germane, item on the agenda. Germane to the items on the agenda. So I'm if sure somebody starts talking sure and the mayor looks at me and says, I'm not sure about it, if it anywhere gets anywhere around the item that's on the agenda we're gonna let it roll we're gonna let them talk about it because it's clear that the general assembly wants this to go we want they want people to be able to talk but if somebody wants to come in and start talking about the war in ukraine or something like that if, if, that's, that's, nothing to do. if that's not germane to any of our issues and i can't <laughs> imagine they would i'm hoping no, it doesn't they get far. <laughs> i don't know yeah. but um um, yes, we would say that's really not a matter on the Give me three minutes. Agenda. Yeah, and so we talked, you could limit, limit it to three minutes if you want to. The main thing I also want to point out is we do have to be careful. If you've got people, and Lisa, we're going to go in by how they sign in. Yes, in order of how you sign in, and that's listed on the rules. And a, and a copy of this. Once the uh, council adopts it, a copy of this will be posted over the podium where they're signing in at, so they can see that. There'll be copies there for them to pick up if they want, so they can read them. Let me point out a statute. This is such a poorly written statute because there's so much in it that's vague that I'm like, how do you interpret that? How are we going to enforce that? 
It also talks about that we have to make our best efforts to see that both or all sides of an issue have an opportunity to speak. And so you may run out at 15, but the folks that signed up all were people that were either pro or con. And so if, if we have, I hope we have an awareness of who may want to speak on something that may be very controversial or very important. And we know that other people have a different view. I mean, I may be looking over and said, you're going to need to let those people speak too, even though your 15 minutes is out. My thought on that, Ginger, was like you let the first person who signed in speak. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's just say if they're against this subdivision that he's got up here. So if the first person speaks against it, then before I call the second name, I would ask, does anybody who signed in to speak have an opposing view to this gentleman? And then if they do, do it that way. And that may cause us to have to jump around. Yes, and, we, and we may have to put that in the rules of how we do. Let me remind you, we also can make people tell us before they even get here. Or name a speaker. Um, if we're do, if well, we're talking about a topic, you have one spokesman for the group that's for and one spokesman for the group that's against. Do it that way. Can we do it that way? I've seen a lot of chairmen in various places do that, particularly at a planning commission. I have to the time at a planning commission because the whole neighborhood will show up right. against a subdivision. Right. And so we generally say pick one or two people. But if people want to speak, he needs to let them speak. Even if they're, because they may have, they may be, just because they're anti or pro, the reasons for that they want to tell you may not be the same. Okay. So, um, I just, yeah, we're going to have to be careful about that. I suggest, yeah, I suggest we try to put that in the guidelines some way. Just, yes. Just in case. We have yes. 50 people show up, everybody wants to speak to we want to get the message out, but I think we want to kind of limit it to you. If you have 50 people on an issue, we're not going to go 15 minutes. We're going to go more than that. Yeah. We will. Okay. All right. Well, I'll get my I'll I'm assuming that my comment to this is the legislature is exempt from this. Oh, you know they are. Uh, that's, that's, that. that's my comment to that. Anybody <laughs> 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 else play on that? That's right. Before we move on, I got lost in the conversation. I'm sorry. <laughs> Medicine and steroids. I'm sorry. Um, but are are we leaving in the study session that they can speak on anything, or do we want to keep it germane to the items on the agenda? Well, actually, because this is what we talked about, Lisa. I believe we actually at the study session. There's no voting. There's not. So we don't. Well, I've had this. <laughs> this has been a hot topic on my list, my email that I'm group that I'm all with all different municipal attorneys. This is a very hot topic about how we interpret this law and what it means. Um, because there is discussion. Because there's discussion, but there's no action technically at this meeting. So that's been a hot topic. Are you going to have to do this at a study session? And that's why I was like, we've already got our citizens' comments. Let's just let our citizens' comments rock. Because, and this is why I think it comes at the end. Because, because everybody's like, you're going to have to have your true comments are going to have to be at the top of an agenda. But in our case, because you're not actually voting at your study session, we could do it at the end and just let it be what we normally have. But that's up to y'all. It's completely up to you. Uh, Whatever you want to do. Uh, I like to restrict it to items on the agenda, mainly because I don't want it to become a complaint department. So, yeah. so a way to pick on the city manager or the public works or whoever mm -hmm. the flavor of the week is that a yeah. group or citizen wants to come in and complain about, as we've seen in the past, and that's hostile about that's it. That's happened with your citizens' comments. So, that to me is a, com a comment on the agenda is what we're here for to meet on and discuss. The complaint department is open every other time of the day at City Hall. Well, folks, if, if there are citizens out there who want to bring something to the city council's attention, you normally go to the city manager 
And you can make a request that something go on your study session for review and talk. Well, many, many, many years ago, we made that, we made, the council made that choice to have citizens' comments. And that was where it was. So you all can change, make your mind in a different direction. So if we stick to items on the agenda that citizens can only speak about, mm -hmm. When do we talk about my neighbor's grass is too high or their dog is running through my yard? Well, and I think you should have an ordinance, uh, ordinance in place for this. So they're shooting firecrackers too early, which is the topic of the week for Facebook and all of this. So when do we talk about a lot of the issues that our citizens are concerned with? Because we don't, we normally that's not on our agenda. I mean, we, in, in, in the, and it's very important. All of those issues are very important to every citizen. But of course, during the daunting budget time, we were three months going through this, and we just don't get there. But let me ask you this. Uh, what do we do? What can we do about a dog running through somebody's yoga? You know, but that's, those are issues that people have problems with, and it's going to be that way. We can't. I mean, we may have an ordinance somewhere, but that's a whole new ball game because are we really enforcing all of the things that we have on the list? Well, let, let me say, can I layers left? So I'm going to tell you, he's recognized, but he's gone. Say as he's left. Um, no, you don't no. often have that. We have had on occasion I, what I would say people have really brought something new to your attention. That is a bigger issue. Most of the things like a dog or grass complaints, you don't need to bring here. It needs to go absolutely to the city manager. Hello. Vice Mayor. Yes. Vice Mayor. You're in charge. Sir. Can we get a five-minute break? I think that'd be a great idea. Okay. We're adjourned for five minutes. Can we go back after? Can we get, yeah. Here we go. The mayor will come back and say, this is thank you. I know. I know. I Thank <laughs> 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 Thank you.
I can see where you got to have some of those giants. They will force me to get there. What's that for? to add things. We operate under Robert's Rules of Order. Usually when the question comes up, but it's not been formally adopted. So no one's been able to show me. Until we adopt Robert's Rules of Order, I'm going to advise you not to add anything to your agendas. We need to adopt it. And so we can do that. What we need to do that actually is by ordinance. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can I can do that pretty quickly. I can get that going real. Mm -hmm. 
Councilman was speaking kind of of the executive session. If we were to restrict the comments and we added an item after the comments, then they wouldn't get to. So what I think we'd have to do, that, I think what we have to do is Embed the agenda and then have your comments. That's it. There you go. We'll have adopt, to adopt the agenda and then have comments. Well, that's what I'll do on all meetings. At the study session, we don't ever adopt the agenda. That's right. So I think we just have to like add there at the top. If we're going to change, you just have to ask me. Like, you can't read your meter. We're going to change the agenda and all that stuff. Good discussion. Number six, historical marker. Scott? Mayor, see the county. I will approach yesterday afternoon. My water loss is project officer for the Bethel County United Veterans County. And they are requesting a historical marker commemorating the award of the Medal of Honor to Captain Charles C. Davis. Uh, leading a cavalry charge <laughs> into Shelbyville Public Square during the Battle of Shelbyville on June 27, 1863. Uh, they are simply asking City Council for approval of placing the uh, marker. And uh, they want this letter presented to the Council, and there is no cost to the City of Shelbyville for this action. It has also been endorsed and approved by the uh, State of Tennessee Historic Society Historical Commission and also Jack Brown County. Any questions? Where, I noticed the map. Is it going to be in the sidewalk there somehow? He goes on to say, sir. I saw the map with your email attachment, but soon it goes. Out there on the sidewalk somewhere. We ensure that any city office you specify is included in this coordination. Uh, they'll also have a ceremony, but he says that location will not have the, any impact on city mobility. Uh, let me quote the friend's letter. The location does not obstruct the sidewalk does not interfere with any traffic signs or obstruct driver's views and complements other efforts to reach the capital. Do we all know who exactly this is? No, ma'am. He's with the Federal County United Veterans Council. What's this, what's this man? Larry Ross. He's going to help. Blair Ross. Blair Ross. Why not? <laughs> and I did race to Riverwood Drive and show It's almost 8 o'clock. Thank you. I think we need to think about this for a while to see what we want to do and where it's going to go if we, if we want to do that. We don't have any time frame on it, do we? You can say you got to do it by a certain time or anything like that. I want to do it by a certain time. I think we can probably do it. There it is. Please get the information. We just need some more information. They've been working with the information that we can back up the day that we're working with. Okay. And then they realized the county uh, did not own the placement they wanted to do it that reflects the charge. Did you add that? Uh, no, I didn't. No. It's not, 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 it's Shelbyville to apply for the Tennessee Department of Transportation's multi-modal grant for 2024. Uh, Scott, would you give us a little information on that, please? Yes, sir. That was simply a, a, a typo on the original agenda about Cadilla City. Yeah, um, we did our notice of intent to apply and we got approved. 
So now this is the application process for phase two of the multimodal grant on uh, Madison Avenue. So right now, I believe we're going to East Lane, and this will continue on from East Lane to, I believe, Stanley, depending on where the money takes us. Uh, it's a 9010, uh, I believe probably 120 in that area, but we have to have the, the engineering and we got to turn it But that's a guesstimate, about 120 is what it would cost us. Probably $1.2 million project. The other one was 1.1. So this is just authorizing us to uh, turn in the application for it. You guys will still have it, an opportunity if we get it to the night. These are sidewalks, right? Yes. Sidewalks all down Madison Street. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Any thoughts on that? Look, if you would stay fucked up just a minute, I'm going to ask you one other thing. Yes, sir. So you think about the sidewalks? Yeah. Um, so what this is, is, is we already got the first one. This is phase two. And what we're asking council wants us to apply for it, then we'll need a resolution. So I'll put a resolution on your agenda next week if everybody's in favor of it. Two weeks. I'm sorry. On July 13th. And, and the reason it's kind of a, de it's a tight deadline, because... We didn't get it on here. There was some miscommunication about whether we need the notice of intent or the resolution. So we need the resolution, but the resolution has to have the information in it. So we have to do all the work and get the, get the application ready so council can sign off on it because the deadline is July 18th. So I kind of need to know, I know you don't really know the amount of money and folks kind of estimating, but I kind of need to know if you're mostly in favor of it. So you have five days after the 13th. Yeah. Get it in. in. Yeah. So the phase one has already taken place. Phase one is we've already gotten it. Yeah. Work. We're waiting for a notice to proceed. Uh, we're probably at the stage of RFQs for engineering. Okay. For the phase one. Okay. So yeah. Okay. All right. So we put that we put that on the agenda. For if, 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 everybody, if, if you're thinking everybody. that you're not going to do it, please let me know. I don't want to waste a bunch of time with the application, getting it ready. If it's something that you guys the want me to kind of proceed, then I can I can get rolling on it. I'd hate to have five days and only to get it done. I personally hate to bypass that, so I think we need it. Sidewalks, yeah, updates. Okay. It cost us about 10%, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Can you just do a general poll? Mr. Marilyn said yes. What do you think? What do you guys think? What do you think, Bob? <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's a little bit of a problem, but it's like probably, you probably will have it. Okay. All okay. right. Mark, uh, while I've got you up here, uh, Scott just passed me something. If you could give us a. Uh, 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 Accepting the recent payment assessment? Yeah, and I guess it was kind of, it didn't turn out really good when they did their presentation and they probably should have uh, presented us with that resolution at that time that they would be. But they are through, uh, I have to, a few deliverables that I have to get from them, which are maps and, and things like that, but everything else I have, what they need is a resolution saying that you guys accept that report. It's been paid for, everything's all taken care of. So a resolution saying that you guys accept the report as they've done. Okay. Does that sound right, Lisa? I thought there was also something in there about that the council will, in their best effort to implement the suggested changes. Yes. So that being their take. Which it will be used in whenever I um, have a payment plan and everything. You know, I'm going to pick the worst roads for it. and I, I will update through the software that we have every time we fix a road and that starts the clock on that road. So it'll be a constant thing that we work through and I think we'll use it quite a bit, okay. especially in planning. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody good with that? How are we getting the rotation of roads? I know that you've been working on that, but I mean, can, can we not get updated? From what you already have, or as far as what I do is I take the the worst rated roads yeah. moving forward. Um, I try to keep I try to do something in every ward, 
but the roads that have the most traffic, the most people living on it, will take priority over the ones that have three or four houses on it. So the ones that have the most traffic are the ones that I'm going to focus on first in order to keep traffic moving through. So if you need me to give you the list of roads that I'm going to do before I do them, I can do that. Um, but usually what I'll do is I'll pick these roads, I'll get with rights, which we need in the contract now, but I'll get whoever our paving, paving uh, contractor is and we'll get estimates from it. And I'll usually do 10 to 15 roads, whatever I can pick that fits within the budget is the roads that I'll pick out of there. Right now, just uh, right offhand, Eagle Boulevard needs to get done. Um, Shelbyville Mills needs to get done. So there's roads like that. Uh, Buffalo Valley needs to get done. Yeah. So there's a lot of roads that I have, but I, I kind of, I got to keep the pavers in a general area so we're not wasting so much time moving from one to the other. Very good. Well, I appreciate the roads you put in my, in my on my street. <laughs> oh, <you're laughs> <great>. On <laughs> my street. It's three. Well, he said he went in on all the wards, and I'm in ward three. Next item is old business, and we don't have any, thank goodness. New business, uh, first reading and amendment to the Fieldstone Plan Unit Development PUD Pattern Book to. Uh, add five residential units, remove the clubhouse, add, uh, remove the commercial portion close to the eastern entrance of the PUD along Highway 231 North. Wally, would you fill us in for that quickly, please? Sure, yeah, I would ask to give it short and sweet. And I'm gonna... Promise what? <laughs> <laughs> so, Mayor, so we received an application to amend plan unit development, which we call PAR. Just first off, I would like to uh, share with you the location because, you know, it's important to know where it is. So if you look at the map here, the area in blue, that's the site. It's about 11.8 acres. It's between Maine on the east side and Midland on the west side. It was originally, thank you. Thank you. It was originally approved in 2017, and in 2019 it was amended. So I'm going to actually give you a little bit of info about what it was in 2019, so that you will actually get to understand what the applicant is asking for. So the back in, uh, so again, just another picture here gives you an idea. This is if you are main and you are looking west. That's what you are going to see, this empty field. And over there on the left hand side, you will see the power lines, those are easements for ship to build up. And I have another picture here taken from on top of the elevated section of the bypass. It gives you an idea of the site. I don't know if you can see it or not, but back on the left hand side, you will see that there are some town homes that are already built, there are about seven. This was supposed to be phase two of the plan, which had two phases. So what was approved in 2019? It was a total of 35 units, and all of them are townhomes. Some are two attached units, some are three attached units. And there were, I don't know if you can see it, but there was a clubhouse, which was shown as lot number 36. It was not a house, it was a clubhouse. And in between, you will see there is a gap in between phase one to the east, which is the one far to the main, phase two to the west, far to the midland. In between, this is kind of a water body or a stadium. So initially in 2017, it was supposed to be connected. However, in 2019, they decided to have it as a distant connection, so cars cannot go in and out. It would be just a small bit. So in essence, you have one part, but it's uh, split into two sections. So the applicant now is coming with a new concept. So what is the difference between the old concept and the new concept? I'm going to go over the main one and I'm going to explain how it relates to our innovation. So the first one was, is actually moving the clubhouse. Um, I would like to emphasize here that, of course, it's nice to have a clubhouse. It's a, I believe it's a good addition. However, <coughs> our zoning regulation for having a park, it's not a requirement. 
So the way we see it, it's mainly between those who bought OED units and the applicant. And everybody was circulated about the application and we didn't get anything against involving the clubhouse. But it's an, again, I would like to emphasize, it's not a requirement in our zoning. Uh, Another thing that the applicant would like to have, to add five more units, to have, to have a total of 40 units, in state, residential units, I mean, in a state of the 35 ones. And you can see four of them are going to be very close to the park, what I mean. One would be on phase uh, two to those. And of course, by having the four more units on phase number one, the one close to Maine, it's, as you can see, it's being pushed closer to Maine and it's gonna result in taking off the commercial piece of land. If I go back to the previous slide, I don't know if you can see it, the piece of land on Maine was supposed to be commercial. And I would like to pause here for a second. As you know, we have discussed a lot the importance of keeping commercial land, and this has been a policy in our comprehensive plan as well as a main discussion we always have. I would like to point out that back in 2019, when they decided to have the commercial piece of land, the way it was designed, it was too small. It's about 0.67 acre, and it has very limited access on Maine, which is about 100 feet, give or take. So, yes, it was put on the part, however, it was very unfeasible to be the bottom because it's small, it's small vantage, it's very close to the elevated section of the bypass. Mm -hmm. So, I just would like to emphasize this because this is not a deviation from the standard we have. It's a unique situation that might not be the same everywhere. So, I just I would like to get the point that we are not, and you will see later on, Recommended, recommending against our standard. It's just a unique situation that is highly unlikely to be feasible to be developed as commercial. And I go back to what the applicant asked for. So this, those were the main points. What else happened during this application is when it was applied for 2017 and 19, for whatever reason, they didn't meet the standards of the parts that we had. So working with the applicant, we were able to have the minimum 5% use of open space in the new submission. We also were able to have the bulk requirement, which actually is what decides how the building will be built. They were not included in the previous part, but they were added now. And all, overall, you will see that the connection is kind of the gray area in between the two phases. We're added, it's very clear. And we also work with the applicant to make sure that mistakes that were done in the past were not be abated. So by that, I mean condition. So we had a condition for the planning commission that as a building would not be in the right of way, the one I talked about for the power lines. And this was actually addressed and Shelbyville Power is okay with the new changes. Also, because of some previous misunderstandings about subdividing out the land and building. So we have a condition that is very clear that no unit or piece of land can be sold unless the preliminary and the final plan are approved and recorded. Also, the, during the planning commission, and may I would remember this, it was in the meeting, there were some concerns about the access from Maine, about the sight line. Mm -hmm. So the applicant worked very quickly on, the, you might be able to see it here. This section here, all the way to the east, it shows the sight line analysis, which meets the requirement of the American Association of States Highway. This was reviewed by our city engineer and staff, and it meets the minimum requirement. So by doing that, the applicant was able to meet all the same conditions that the planning commission had during our last week's meeting. Because of that, a staff would recommend the approval without any condition because the condition were already met. With that, I just would like to open the floor for any discussion if you guys have it. I just have a quick one. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, removing the field of the building, entering the clubhouse. What were 
comments from the current residents that are already there? So we send the application to all of them. And to this moment, we did not hear back from any of them. However, of course, there are the ones that can speak to the applicant because this is above our minimum regulations. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> existing residents were aware that the clubhouse is being limited. Uh, we circulated everything online. We tried to actually touch base with them and let them know. As, as far as I know, until now, we don't hear back from anyone. So maybe somebody will contact us between now and the actual council meeting. But so far, we did not hear back from them. And Molly, I don't think that was in the restricted covenants. Uh, Clubhouse is not in the restricted covenants. Uh, it was not. It was just shown on the right. It was just right. a class, so they don't have to go back to their homeowners' section and have a vote, and then have to go within the restricted covenants. So you don't have to worry about that. Mr. Hine Council, this is on for a first reading on the July 13th meeting, and then there will be four subsequent hearings. Staff reading August 10th. At least I may add also as a requirement of any part amendment, there was an actual public meeting that was hosted by the applicant. And before the public meeting, uh, neighboring property owner were also circulated on the time, the location. And you will see this on the folder that was sent to you guys. You will see. Yeah, it would be included in your package for the signing sheet of the people who would choose the public meeting. Oh. The main point, sorry, sorry, go ahead. The main point I would just like to emphasize, this is not a deviation from the policies we have or all what we have heard back from you about commercial pieces of land. By no means, uh, we don't want this to be construed as being a shift in the nation. But it's not, it's just, the way it was done back in 2019, it appears to just have been added without really knowing <coughs> how it would be used. Thank you, Wally. Thank you. Resolutions, we have none, business items, none, purchasing bid items. Uh, MSA self-contained breathing apparatus, SCBA for the fire department. Uh, Lori, please. Fancy words for air packs. And we purchased these. We're requesting to purchase them through um, national cooperative that we purchased through before. We actually did last July as well. Um, $52,875, the budget amount. For fiscal year 24 is 55,125. Any questions for Lori on that? Okay. The next item is photography services for the youth sport league with a two one year options for renewal. And um, because I was late getting this request out to Mac Brown Photography and the way the calendar fell this month, they requested more time to prepare and we'll move this to the August agenda. Questions on that? Um, last one is various rocks. <laughs> Various rocks for the city departments with it with a slash two one year options for renewal. Yes, um, the we current... only use these rocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. We're pretty thrifty, but anyway, um, this was awarded to Rogers Group last year, and the bid is awarded with two one year options for renewal. So basically, they could have the contract for a total of three years, um, but Rogers group elected to not renew. So I will be going back to the bid table with this. So this will not be on your July agenda either. And we're anticipating this type of response. And any questions? Floor? Anyone? On any of those items? Thank you, Lord. 
appointments. Airport Authority, I think uh, we had one uh, uh, term was about that. Yes, Actually, if you remember Kelly Wilson, he was appointed to um, finish a term for a member that couldn't serve any longer. So he finished that term. So he is up for reappointment and has stated to me that he is requesting to be reappointed at the council of peace bit and I uh, to do so. So that's Kelly Wilson. And it, your airport term is five years, I believe. He's been an excellent guy. Yes, he has been. His knowledge has been really invaluable to the I recommend that. His work was good on the things that I've worked on. Yes, the council. Beer board. On your beer board, you have five members. All of them come up every year. Your term on that is one year. All four of your members, there are four members that are willing to be reappointed and they have served for a couple of years. They're good members. Um, Ms. Lizzie Peoples, who has been on the beer board for a long time, has asked to be released. She's got some issues and some things going on that take her time, so she's asked to be taken off. So we will need one member to be, uh, yeah, to be a, to be appointed to beer board. And that's like I said, it's a one year time. You will get with Lisa or get with me and give me a name on, on those things. I'd sure appreciate it. Someone that will have the time to serve and will serve the city well. All these are volunteers' positions, and we really appreciate it. Industrial Development Board. Uh, there's one member on that, it's Daryl O'Neill. That board, I believe, is a six year appointment. I'd have to look back to make sure. But he is eligible for reappointment. I haven't spoken to him, so I'm not sure if he is interested, but I can reach out to him. Okay, thank you. Library board. Mine's a little complicated. That is, uh, we usually go by the recommendations from the library for that. Uh, they have told me that Councilmember Bellhouse's term is up, that he served two terms and can't be re so <laughs> Are you familiar with that information? Uh -huh. Okay. We don't think we had a It's a council member appointment, so I don't believe you have a term. So I wanted to make sure that we were all in agreement with that. We were in have have November or December. I mean, December. I think, uh, think their term, they're, they obviously don't have term limits for their members, and I think they're trying to apply that to you, but you're a council representative on there, so I don't believe that applies to you. So his, his one, there I believe are two others aside from him that will need to be reappointed, but the, but the library has given me uh, appointments for that if the council agrees. Okay. Any questions on anything? Other business? Don't have anything. And I think Lisa already made this announcement, but City Hall will be closed on Tuesday, July the 4th, and observe, uh, observation of Independence Day. Tuesday's trash will be picked up on Wednesday, July the 5th, with Wednesday's regular route. Uh, citizens' comments? We'll have citizen comments at this time. No comments? All right. I have a motion to Oh, you do. I was wondering if y'all'd like to go over the new budget. <laughs> Good, Good night, Jay. Jay, I love you. I have a motion to adjourn. Oh, she's almost. Scott Collins looked at me yesterday, two days ago, and said it's a short agenda. Yeah. Study session.